reminding people of what they already know. So I'm just going <coughs> to break off for a second and see if something, yeah. Something that's really interesting about that is as you're going forward into this realm of information, you know, we're getting to also social media. Yeah. And part of the social media is that we're all becoming aware of all of the lessons that each other have learned. And so it's helping to increase our awareness of all of our lessons all together. So yeah. in a lot of ways that information technology is helping to birth Right. Greater awareness. Yeah, it's the, it's the extreme of separation, which is everybody in front of their <coughs> own screen, not even touching each other anymore. You know, in their own little room. I, at Penn State, I was at Penn State for a while teaching, and one of the students said, you know, when I was a freshman, everybody in the hall, in the dorm, knew each other. And today, now as a senior, I'm an RA, and not a single, like almost nobody knows mm. anybody else in the hall because I was in front of their computers. Mm -hmm. You know? So like that's the extreme of separation, but like you're saying, it's also creating oneness again. You know, like like what happens anywhere can spread to everywhere, and it's impossible to to it's it's getting harder and harder to categorize people as other, which makes it harder and harder to wage war. You know, like we used to it used there used to be an easy formula to start a war. You know, you just have to kind of demonize the other. Uh, Hermann Goring, the Nazi, you know, explained it very well. You know, you say that the enemy's at the door, you know, and anybody who disagrees with you is a threat to our security, you know, and he says it's easy to convince a population to go to war. But now that's getting harder because we can, we can um, <clears throat> see images uh, from the point of view of an Iranian person. So it's, it's harder and harder to demonize them. And I think, um, and, and the collateral damage, so-called, becomes more and more apparent. And so one, one response, and you notice like the wars that the United States has been instigating for the last 10 or 20 years have been different from in ancient times where it was just mass destruction. You just like exterminate everybody, you know, because they're the enemy. Now, like, you kind of go in and, like, okay, you know, which are the insurgents and which are the citizens, you know, and it gets really messy, you know, and this problem of distinguishing the combatants from the non-combatants is actually an impossible problem to solve. So, you know, then we decide, then we, in order to kind of insulate ourselves from those difficulties, we use drones instead so that you're just, you know, uh, basically playing a video game and there's the blip on the screen and you press button the button, you know, and then, you know, it's just like a video game, it's gone. And, and there's some kind of distancing that goes on, but even that's not enough now. So this kind of expansion in consciousness is making it more and more difficult to wage war. And even though things look still really bad, the number of war casualties per capita has declined steadily since 1945. Yeah. Do we get a picture, though, of what the future or what now could be? All we see are negatives. The media is negative. We don't see any pictures or any even movies, anything with a real positive future. Yeah, not very often. I mean, sometimes yeah, there's something that gives us, like, a glimpse. Yeah, you, like you get a glimpse sometimes. Um, it could be like kind of a personal glimpse. Um, what was I hearing? I was talking to somebody today. I think it was it was it was you like like this uh, healing device, right? Mm -hmm. You know that that um, this guy had had thousands of dollars of blood work done about Lyme disease and all the co-infections and stuff, you know, and and it's basically almost incurable from the standpoint of conventional medicine, you know. And so then he goes to this alternative practitioner, and there's this device that he puts his hand on and it asks a series of questions and then and judging by his galvanic skin response gives the answers 
and it reads off the same results as the blood tests, but without, you know, thousands of dollars, without anything. And then the practitioner prescribes like these, you know, detoxification re regimens and things like that, that cost almost nothing compared to the enormous amounts of antibiotics and stuff like that. So there's an experience of what the world could be. You know, you, 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 you like, it's something that's alternative. It's on the margins. They don't teach it in medical school. You know, the insurance companies don't recognize it, and it's absent from the conversation about Obamacare. It's in a different universe. It's on the margins. But it's there, and it's a glimpse, like, what if all medical schools taught this technology? You know, what would our health care costs be then? Almost nothing. You know, and all of, I mean, do you know many, how many people in this society are medical billing specialists? Tens of thousands of people. You know, I mean, all of this effort, totally unnecessary. We could be averaging 15 hour, 10 hour work weeks if we didn't do all this unnecessary stuff. Like, so that's like a little glimpse that that person had of a more beautiful world. And sometimes we have glimpses at like, you know, some event, you know, where, where everybody's kind of effortlessly cooperating in mutual respect, without hierarchies, without horizontal bullying, you know, like, and you have a feeling like, yeah, this is a glimpse of what could be. So, so we get these glimpses of the future, and sometimes we read a news story, you know, about, um, you know, like a peace and reconciliation committee in South Africa, and, and like, you know, some kind of forgiveness that comes out of it, or some, some good deed that someone does, you know? Because if one person does it, like that, like that cop who gave away his boots to the homeless person, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and you think like, what would the world be if everybody just decided to trust? At that moment, the cop was like, I'll be okay. You know, he wasn't calculating how much these boots cost me. I'll be okay. What if everyone just adopted that? Like, that world, I mean, we could solve our problems so quickly. Even, you know, climate change and stuff. How much of all of this fossil fuel is really contributing to human well-being? Very little, you know? So, so there's this glimpse of a more beautiful world that, on the one hand, it's right there. It wouldn't take much to get there. On the other hand, it's impossibly distant, you know? Like, where on the spectrum of political opinion about Obamacare is, is that technology? It's, it's not even there. You know, so it's, it's at once right in front of our face, and it's also impossibly distant. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, because um, I have a little activity I, idea that we can do together. There's a lot of hands raised. Sebi? Yeah, so I, I wanted to answer that too. And you had started out um, earlier talking about knowing so many people that are having these like devastating experiences. Yeah. Um, and I think to me that like that's... And, and, and so it's, it's that tied in with the idea that, that change here, um, you know, whatever it was you were talking about uh, crystallizing the xylitol. You know, so, so it's, um, I, think, I think that there is such purpose, at least I can speak for me, there's been such purpose in, in, in my life in acts of devastation because what, what it does is, and if we're all kind of, if, if, if everything is... is related or one or or similar or patterns repeat each other like in nature then it seems to me that if I can come through a, an act of devastation and feel hope and beauty and love and faith and trust then th that's all that's more proof I think than than anything else can really give me and 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 then there's no telling what scale that can be applied to yeah, you know, because it says what it, it kind of says, and you can say defines what's possible. Like you know, say you're you know you're going through a breakup, and you know she did this, and then she did that, and you know she's just bad. <laughs> like, like I'm appalled. How could she do those things? If I were her, I wouldn't be doing those things. So this is a bad person. I've got to go to war against her basically because a bad person they're not going to do anything other than bad. And I've got to protect myself. I've got to overcome this person. Like this is, this is the way that human history has gone for thousands of years, and it's the pattern of overcoming evil. Mm -hmm. And every person, every dictator in history, has believed that they're on the side of good. 
and that a better world will come through conquering evil. So on a personal level, you know, that's, that's the old pattern. And every time we do that and try to get revenge, then we're strengthening the field for that to happen for, to everybody and between nations and between species. But when you act in a different way and you're feeling that anger, you know, and, and, and instead you listen to that knowledge that that's spreading now, you know, and you have a friend who helps you with it, you know, and, and you meet people more and more who reinforce that, and maybe you forgive instead, uh, which maybe doesn't mean that you let her, you know, run all over you, but, but, but you know, you're not seeing her as enemy anymore. Like, you do that, and it seems, well, it was really hard, and it's, and it's so personal. And it seems like it's just happening in this personal realm. But actually, like you're saying, it's creating a template. I, I had an experience like this years and years ago when I was breaking up with my ex-wife. And I was so mad at her, you know. And I had this whole story about how awful she was being and how abusive, you know, and, and how I would, even if I left her, she would hound me for the rest of my life, you know. And, 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 I, and I went for a walk and I was like, I'm just going to have to fight back, you know. I'm going to have to totally not trust her and protect myself and basically go to war against this person. And I don't care what happens. I'm going to go nuclear, you know. And I went for a walk, and all of a sudden, I just got this, like, revelation that if I went nuclear, then there would be a nuclear war on this planet. Because if I couldn't choose another way with someone I loved, like, how could I expect... How could I rationally expect, you know, Russia and not mm. to choose that way, you know? Like, how could I expect there ever to be peace on Earth? Like, and it felt at that moment that I was choosing, and here's the thoughts and reality thing. It felt at that moment I was making a choice not just about this relationship, but I was making a choice, what world am I going to live in? What's the nature of reality? What world am I going to live in? And so I think that... You know, sometimes, like, political radicals will say, Charles, what you're saying is very dangerous because you're perpetrating the illusion that it's all about personal choices when actually it's about systems. And you're diverting energy that could go towards systems change toward these inconsequential and systemically uh, innocuous, uh, you know, little personal dramas. But really, we need to be out in the streets. We've got to be fighting the system. You know, we've got to be doing big things, not these little things. These are distractions. Maybe after we solve climate change and global impo poverty and injustice, maybe then we can focus on the personal, but right now there's no time to do that. So you're, doing, you're, you're, you're creating complacency. You're, you're, you're you know, directing attention away from where it's really needed. Um, but I fundamentally disagree with that. And it's not to say that the big systemic things are not important, but it's, but it's to say that really um, that... That activism, whether on the personal or systems level, comes from the same place. Anyway, I went on a lot, but a lot, but thanks. Yeah. Uh, I was curious, you had